What made you choose Saluma as the light therapy that you offer in your clinic? So every time I bring something into my practice, it's got to be something with robust clinical data, peer-reviewed publications, it's got to have clinical evidence, it's got to be backed by science, and it's got to work as well. It's got to generate results. So I look for quality products that I would bring into my practice that my patients will benefit from. Results that they can see, feel, track, measure and celebrate. That is it. But it's got to be scientifically backed. So when I think about historically the, the LED systems that I've had in the practice, they've been good. But none of them have had this level of scientific clinical backing. So in 2019, I had seen, where's Paul Cohen? Paul Cohen's over there. And he was on a stand at a conference and I walked past him and I saw this flexible, shape-taking, as I now know it, LED device. And I thought, wow, that looks really nice. So when I then think about 2020, and I think I mentioned it earlier, we went into the pandemic, I was wearing a mask for a long time and I was breaking out. And I thought, I need something better now. I need something better, I need something different and everyone was getting tired and everyone was getting breakouts and everyone was just feeling washed out and drained and a little bit low and I listened to Patrick during the, I listened to you during the lockdown Patrick you were plugged in we hadn't met yet and I was listening to this gentleman talk about the science and the mitochondrial activation and the biochemical pathways and all the geeky stuff that happens within cellular function and that's enough to sell me because something that can scientifically switch on ATP production from two to three, that's going to be fantastic because we know that we go into senescence, we slow down. And Victoria, we talked about aging being a loss of energy, didn't we? And it is, we're slowing down. And now, fast forward three years, you look at the electric car re revolution and we even have charging points at home. So that tells us that we need to get the electric car, and we're going to drive it all the way and it's going to de compress and we need to plug it in again and when I look at our human physiology I think we're pretty much the same is that would you say that absolutely That's it, it. we need to plug ourselves in every yeah. now and again in this world <laughs> I love the idea that this is like um, photosynthesis for humans um, because we don't I, I mean I know we all love sitting around in the Sun but this is doing something quite different isn't it and um, when we were talking earlier you said how we have receptors mm -hmm. for light in our cells, which we evolved to have there, but they right. haven't been being activated. Right. But this can activate them. I mean, you know, who knew? Yeah. Uh, you know, what fundamentally distinguishes plants from animals is plants get their cellular energy through the, from the sun through photosynthesis, and and mammals um, get it through the mitochondrial process, where we're synthesizing glucose from digestion and oxygen from respiration and creating, creating a trifosphate or ATP, um, which is cellular energy. And, and we know from the clinical literature that as we age, that process degradates. I'm, arguably, that's the definition of aging. And so, you know, what we're able to do is take advantage of photoreceptors, specifically cytochrome C oxidase, and, and when it is triggered in absence of it doing its job, it sort of doesn't have any choice but to produce the ATP. And not only right. to re-regulate ATP levels, but to upregulate ATP levels to six times yeah. normal. So you go from a, a state of hyper-aging to a state of hyper-healing. Mm -hmm.